Even in the ocean, sex is just about as necessary as food. These are yellow saganids. Their mating behavior includes a whirling, dance-like ritual. Even the stingrays move in graceful undulation. After mating, these blue chromids remain together, and the male displays a strong territorial drive as he defends the eggs deposited in the green mass below, protecting them from would-be predators. Symbiosis is the close association of two different organisms to the benefit of both. The larger fish is a manta ray. The smaller fish, at times attached to its underside, are remoras. The manta, in swimming about, ensures that the remoras feed well, while the remoras remove parasites from the manta. Two unlikely roommates are the goby and the snapping shrimp. As the goby waits patiently, the shrimp bulldozes a hole in which they both live. The sea anemone uses its stinging tentacles to paralyze its prey. But the clownfish is impervious to its poison and is a welcome guest. For while the clownfish enjoys this protection from its own enemies, its bright colors still lure other fish into the anemone's deadly tentacles. One of the most bizarre fish on the reef, not in looks, but in behavior, is the cleaner fish. It actually sets up a cleaning station, which other fish line up to visit. The cleaner fish, like the remora, eats parasites, moving with complete freedom through the gills and even the mouth of the larger fish, without fear of being eaten. This floating mass of sargassum harbors the basic food element of the ocean, plankton. When they congregate in the billions, they stripe wide swatches through the sea. But the minute creatures which make up plankton cannot be seen individually by the naked eye. The microscope reveals a world in miniature of plants and animals. It's another of the sea's anomalies to find that the largest inhabitant of the reef, the manta ray, feeds only on the smallest, the plankton. Usually though, feeding is the instance of a smaller fish being eaten by a bigger fish, which in turn is eaten by a bigger fish. Once a fish is injured, he is dead. A 
feeding frenzy is not limited to sharks alone. But finally, size tells. Man, as a predator, is not much of an influence on the barrier reef. He occasionally hooks a fish, but many areas are protected and there is little commercial fishing. Despite the occasional angler on the reef, a fish needs most to fear his fellows. However, every creature on the reef has evolved some form of defense to ensure the continuance of its species. One of the most common defenses is camouflage. It's apparent that neither we nor a predator can see the coral cod until he moves. Even when we freeze the film and we know where to look for it, The octopus can jet propel itself through the water, but usually depends on its ability to change color and melt into the background. Or hide in a dark crevice. Rays and other bottom fish cover themselves with sand to thwart detection. The coral cod, when frightened, as he was by our pursuit, is also able to change color. Here he abandons his large spots and changes to a solid dark color as we draw closer. is what we and any predator notice first, and not the stationary wire netting cod. This already well camouflaged stonefish becomes covered with algae and impossible to see lying on the ocean bottom. We had to find these and some other organisms we filmed in an aquarium. Some animals forsake camouflage for armament. Sharp, brittle spines are the sea urchin's defense. And these spines also move in a manner which brings food particles toward the animal's mouth. fish has poisonous spines hidden in its beautiful dorsal fins. Small barbs on a bony frame is the defense of the porcupine fish. A number of sea creatures are protected by a hard outer covering. The spiny crayfish and the sea turtle. The hermit crab appropriates the abandoned shells of other animals to protect its own soft exterior. And the spiral gilled coral worm is a master of retreat. It lives in the hard coral and when threatened, instantly disappears into its borrowed fortress.
Many fish use the coral itself for protection, gliding into its overhangs and recesses at the first hint of danger. and sometimes living deep within its bony arms. Perhaps the most common defense of all is schooling. For an ocean predator, like one on dry land, will single out a specific victim and pursue it. Thus, each individual in the school finds safety in numbers and contributes to the safety of the others. But I can't think of concepts like predation and escape when I'm down here. I find it hard to think of my own safety. I'm so dazzled by the beauty of their flashing patterns. <laughs> 